with my money? With my yeah. money, Manuel? With oh, my yeah. money? What did he say? Recaps and crazy hats, that's what we wanna see. We are on episode number 19 of 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After, the last episode before the tell-all. I've moved, I got married, when for it to just fail is like such a waste. <laughs> of a lot of my life. We are starting off with Rob the Knob, Sophie and her trash bag friend Kay. I'm halfway home and Sophie's calling me, begging me to come back. Rob is driving home from dumping Sophie, probably the smartest thing this knob has ever done in his life. And then Sophie calls him back to Kay's house. This is just like some sick game for him to throw in my face at like how it would feel to lose him and like fake dump me. I don't know, like, is this a real breakup? He arrives and Sophie is giving him the silent treatment. Sophie, you asked me to come back here. Why? And Sophie is only mad that Rob dumped her and she didn't dump him. Because I don't understand what the f you just did. You're trying to break up with me. How does that make any sense? When I'm the one that moved out and I was upset. This episode does our little sloppy Sophie no favors. She lets her raging lunatic out of the bag. Then bye then, bye, have a good I feel like there's not enough oxygen going to my head. Don't right, me. If don't I don't me. Get it. Bye. You'll never get... see me again then. Goodbye. During the episode, she calls Rob back to Kay's house multiple times, gives him the silent treatment, yells at him, then he leaves, then he comes back. She's chasing him around with no shoes. It is now raining. But, like, what's going on upstairs that you come running out here, get in the car? As many times as, I, as I've said I can't do this, I don't feel loved. What you expect? And she's got her stupid little emotional support Furby in her hands the whole time. Kay's insufferable in her stupid little Shein hillbilly camo dress escalating the whole thing. He's crazy! To break up with her after everything he's done? So this episode makes Rob the Knob look like a sane, stable human being and Sophie like a raging lunatic. Don't talk about it. <laughs> So much just dump me over what? I didn't do anything. At some point during all this, she's like, I want to call my mommy. And I think the collective world is screaming at their TVs like, no, do not call Claire. Mommy dearest, Claire is the reason why Sophie's life is a total mess. Why she married a narcissist like Rob and is running around in Kay's house with her emotional support Furby like a five-year-old. You want me to leave? Take the squishmallow. Actually, I want the squishmallow. I want that, actually. And then Kay is like having a pissing contest with Rob in her own damn mind. How dramatic can he be? Are we sure he's not a female? I think I'm more of a man than Rob is. This entire episode almost makes you forget that the prior 18 episodes, Rob has been a manipulative, raging narcissist. I understand that you're sad when I'm not with you, but you, you don't change. Sophie, this is a, a marriage isn't one person is always wrong and the other person's always right. Like, what don't you get about that? And then get your barf buckets out for this one because we get a sneak peek of the tell-all where Sophie is telling the girls that she recreated Rob's knob into a play toy. I bought a customized dildo to his size. I made a video. Like working with it? Yes. It was still not enough. And oh, he still God. jacked off to other women. Oh my God. <gasps> Who would want to move with him? I take care of Sophie now. She don't need him. Next, we have Ashley and Manuel, and that little rat-faced weasel is drunk as a skunk. Well, cheers, no, 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 just see her, don't they stop? Cheers, amigo. No, yes. send her a key, don't they style the metal? And Manuel's favorite whiskey is doing him dirty because it is working as a truth serum, and he admits everything. With my money? With my yeah. money, Manuel? And he took the thousand dollars, changed the password, and sent it back to Ecuador. And idiot Ashley is all like, Pikachu face, I'm so surprised because we just cried yesterday over all this. We cried together, those fake crocodile tears. Ashley's mom in her speckled glasses is loving this. Her sister is loving it even more. No está en el banco. Lo ocupé en otras cosas. Wait. Hypocritica. You just dragged me for how long about my student loan debt. 
Little rat face Manuel storms out of the whiskey bar. And then when he realizes Ashley is following him, he's like, oh, great. The crazy woman is following me. Ahí está la loca. Can't stop it, Sando. And Ashley still tries to talk to him. She's like, you know what? We're drunk. We need to talk about this later. Like, no, buy him a ticket, put him back on a plane, send him home. I think he has a whole nother family. He's not trustworthy. They shouldn't be together. I'm ready for him to just go somewhere else. And then at the end of their segment, Manuel's like, well, I might as well just go back home to Ecuador because Ashley never lets me explain anything. So he's trying to gaslight us to believe that Ashley doesn't spend every freaking episode asking him for explanations of where money is going. The lights have never been turned off and homeboy getting thick as all hell. He eating, that is for damn sure. So, so these two probably found a dirty, nasty gas station on the way home to boom, boom it out because yesterday Ashley was posting their wedding photos on Instagram and defending their relationship. People with penises are ass Clarity, transparency, and love. That's what I need. And then we can go the distance. Next, we have Emily Kobe and Emily's poor parents. Emily's parents are just trying to enjoy some wine and charcuterie on the porch of their own damn house. But Emily and Kobe ruin their night. I'm not 12. Like, like yes, I'm 32 and I live in your home. But like, we are moving out. These two squatters tell Emily's kind, generous parents that they have once again broke the only rule they have for living in their house. Do not get pregnant. They, they promised us they weren't gonna have another baby here. And I feel like we all had just started to turn the corner and come around to sort of liking Emily. But she goes and undoes that this episode. Listen, we want to do what's right for you guys. Absolutely, we agree on that fully. I feel like the prior 18 episodes, we started to like Emily because it was mainly about her parents and Kobe. You know, expecting this now. Oh boy, we weren't expecting it either. Emily first acts like this baby was a surprise when telling her parents, but she admitted to us that she didn't use any form of contraception. Emily's gonna wanna stay as long as she can. She can. And then her parents start catastrophizing. They are like, oh my God, we've created a monster and she is never gonna stop squatting in our basement. Okay, so house. when are you, when are you gonna buy a house? when the right one comes on the market. We already no, got it. Here's what I think you should do. Uh -huh. Emily's mom was just like, if you guys don't get out soon, I am going to have to give you an ultimatum. Okay, then we The only reason we live here is to save up to buy a house. Okay, and we are ready so to you're buying right here a house. almost five years. So Emily is a total brat who's like, okay, I'm gonna go tomorrow and buy us a house. Sure. Yeah, it's a starter home. But I wanna go home and I wanna love my home. But the house has to have everything I want about it that I like, and when I come home to it, I need to feel super good about it. Kobe is just like any damn house will do, and her parents are just like, hey, it's a starter home, you can get what you need later. So Emily gets up, storms off, crying. She is mad that Kobe wasn't taking her side, and that Kobe was taking the side of her parents, who are actually very, like, level-headed for all this. You've got to do it for your own. Oh my god, if someone mentions I have to... Think about moving out. Where and if I had to take a guess, I'm pretty sure in some way they are contributing to the down payment of this house they're gonna buy. I don't understand it. why you're having the attitude now. Because, uh, because. Uh, Emily's run off to the kitchen and doubles down on it. She's like, yeah, I snapped, but I'm hormonal. I really thought the reveal would be something like, oh, that's so great because I snapped. But like, understands what I'm going through right now. So if I snap, I snap. Like acting like having a baby is not some sort of choice in 2024. Okay, you're hormonal, but you brought this all on yourself. I don't care. No. By not following your parents' one single rule. It's so frustrating. Kobe seems well aware he won the boomer parent lottery and he lets his ungrateful wife rant and rave alone in the kitchen. So annoying and then Kobe doesn't have my back because I snapped, but like, I don't care. Jasmine and Gino are still fighting backstage of her janky beauty pageant. My life is so We are forced to watch a standoff about Jasmine's visa paperwork. Has it been submitted or not? Did you submit my paperwork? Did you submit the paperwork, yes or no? Don't tell me yes or no. You were there when I was filling it out. Do you remember that, yes or no? Gino quickly backs down, admits he didn't send it, but he also says he doesn't know why Jasmine thinks he sent it. So you haven't? No! I got 20% to do yet. This is so shocking for me, you know. You just ruined my life. 
You hate me. Jasmine does what she does best. She loses her shit and storms off. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. You're nuts. You're trying to, to, to make me crazy, okay? Yeah. And, you, and I'm not gonna give you that power anymore, you know? So she is running between janky hotels back to her hotel in her pageant dress, carrying her flowers and wearing her crown. He's the one taking decisions. He's Mr. Perfect, Mr. Right, and I'm the problem. When she finally gets back to the hotel room, she picks the exact same fight again. She wants to know why Gino hasn't submitted the paperwork. It's her first summer in Michigan, which is a very short season. I didn't want to be inside doing paperwork. Gino that... admits that he didn't submit it because he wants to enjoy the Michigan summer and he wanted to be a stage mom for Jasmine's pageant. And why are you denying me from one of my basic rights? To Denying? have a, yes, to have a permanent resident. Why you have a what are you talking about? I'm and the one. our lunatic Jazzy is acting like she has no agency in this, that she couldn't have filled out the paperwork herself, or that she couldn't have used the pageant money to at least hire a lawyer to fill out some of the paperwork. Forcing me to do it. Because having the paperwork means that I can go back to see my children, idiot. She quickly backs herself into a corner where Gino finally says, go home if you really want to go home. Yeah, I understand it's that. Not the green card what I want yeah. is the benefit of going back and seeing my children. You can go back and see your children now. So Jasmine really has nowhere else to go in this argument, so she reverts back to basically that Gino is trafficking her in Michigan. Give me my password. Why do you have you, all, why you have all my you legal don't. documents? If I gave you your password, you'd lose it. So she sets him up to act like he is withholding her passport and she is trapped and he has the passport locked in a safe in the hotel room. It's actually in a sandwich bag in his luggage and she could grab it anytime. You leave. So she storms out of the room, throws the flowers at Gino, goes to the front desk, uses Gino's credit card to get her own room so she can wear her crown alone in bed and pout. I got my crown, but my marriage is just at the verge of the breaking point. So basically nothing new this episode. Jasmine remains a unhinged psychopath and Gino remains a bumbling idiot. And her kids still have a deadbeat mom. I don't know. Um, I'm not feeling the love right now. Next up is Angela and Michael, and she is teaching Michael how to do the laundry for all her feral grandkids and herself. Whoa, whoa. Well, maybe they wouldn't pop out if you play with them. <laughs> That's what they're trying to tell you. <laughs> Angela makes the whole thing pervy as expected. Right here. Don't measure. That's for damn people who know what they're doing here. Pour, 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 pour. Don't be slow, baby. Do it like you're making love. There you go. Oh. Hey! <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we are uncomfortable voyeurs of a very Mima Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Angela has come prepared. She's got two tacky crown ornaments fully bedazzled for her and Michael to put up upon her tinseled plastic Christmas tree. Then we gather around Mima's finest folding table popped up in the middle of the living room for a Christmas feast. All American food is so, <laughs> it's weird. But this time I'm not spitting anything else. The spicy little grandkids are asking Michael a million questions. What is your favorite part about the United States? Uh, I don't have any... Me, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> that was the right answer. Then Skyla comes with a heavy hitter. She's like, yo, Michael, why have you not been taking pictures of Angela's hoard to send home to your family about your life in Hazelhurst, Georgia? Uh, because I don't have a phone. What happened to your phone? Uh, my phone got broken. Angela is pissed at Michael for telling them the truth that she smashed his cell phone. The feral grandkids are put to bed and Angela goes to smoke a carton of cigarettes in the kitchen with Skyla. Angela is ranting and raving about all her grievances with Michael and Skyla tells her that she needs to hire a private investigator. A few days pass and then we are all off to go to China Buffet in Hazelhurst, Georgia to meet up with a private investigator. Mama just keeps hiding for him, hiding for him. You really do seem like a one of them old, naive, old ladies that Bitch. get scammed. Well, that's what you act like. 
Angela is looking a little snatched here. She looks like the raisin version of Jessica Simpson. Like someone back in 2008 put Jessica Simpson in a food dehydrator and they just took her out. This guy is not playing around. He is like, I'm gonna search the gray web, the purple web, the blue web, and I'm gonna find every detail about Michael and I have connections on the ground in Nigeria. I can try to extract all the communication and it doesn't matter if it's been deleted. <gasps> He's got the wrong American. Patrick and Thais throw Elise her birthday party and Patrick confronts his dad about paying rent and about his crappy childhood. Patrick is crying about how he didn't have a dad and his dad's like, well, I didn't have a dad too. But Daddy-O then realizes his payday might be drying up a little, so he backs down, says I'm sorry, and hugs Patrick, but it doesn't seem very genuine. But Patrick's pretty happy with it. Lauren and Alexi went out of their way to be boring and insufferable this episode, so there's nothing to report. Thanks for watching and make sure to click like and subscribe and next week we begin the five-part tell-all.